What's up guys, Brawlers from Talk Gaming here. Today I wanted to kind of go back in time about a year ago and go over a underrated gem that I think deserves a lot more credit and a lot more attention than it's actually gotten. That's right guys, I'm talking about Insurgency Sandstorm. This game came out, I believe, December 2018, so it's been almost a year now. The reason I'm still doing a review almost an entire year after its release, besides the fact that I just recently picked it up, is because this is an important game and this is an important game for a few different reasons. And I don't mean important politically, or important because it's pushing any sort of narrative, anything like that. This game is important because it's probably better than any other first-person shooter, military shooter that's come out in the last, almost probably about two years, guys. And the fact that IGN, GameSpot, the, the usual suspects aren't shilling about it still says a lot about their journalistic integrity. You know, what do you mean? What do you mean, IGN? They put out some great reviews on GameSpot. I go to them for all my reviews. They gave the game an 8.8 .8 on IGN and an 85% on PC Gamer. F*** that, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is how these journalists nowadays will continue to push news out for the new Call of Duty or the new Battlefield. Every time, you know, the developer farts at Infinity Ward, IGN is posting an article on their website about how good the fart smells and how everyone should pick up the fart and go buy the fart. What? How do, how do you buy farts? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I need an explanation. What is the matter with you? This game is important because the developers have been doing a really good job keeping the game updated and patched to make sure that the game is balanced, to make sure that there are no assholes running around with cheat software, that kind of stuff. Make sure that the game performs smoothly. Whereas the only patches that these other AAA developers are releasing are patches that add more microtransactions, that add more to the monetization and their little shops and that kind of shit. More content that you gotta pay for. Yes, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm pretty fed up with how the AAA industry has... Alright, sorry, this is a review. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to it. <coughs> So like I said, this game's important, and besides the fact that this game came out less than a year ago and they reviewed it and kind of threw it to the side, this shows a lot about the type of people that are actually playing these games at these outlets. For example, if we go back, we look at the Resident Evil 2 review from IGN where they got called out because somebody who quote-unquote played the game didn't even know that there was a second playthrough, like an entirely second campaign. Of course, IGN went back and they altered the review to make sure that it reflected the utmost professionalism that IGN has in the game journalist world. <laughs> No, no, no. So what all this tells me is that this game was too hard for these guys to play. Yeah, that's right. This game isn't easy. This isn't Call of Duty. This isn't Battlefield. This is a more realistic modern military, almost a simulation, I guess you can say. This is one of those games where if you poke your head up at the wrong time and you get hit once, your head's going to come off, clean off your shoulders. Did you see him at the car? These journalists don't actually play games, guys. They don't sit down and play the games. I mean, let's not forget games journalist, quote unquote, and I use heavy quotes on that. Dean Takahashi couldn't even finish the fucking Cuphead tutorial. Anyways, this isn't about Cuphead. It's back to the review. Stay on target. So what is Insurgency Sandstorm? So Insurgency Sandstorm is a modern military first person shooter where you kill the bad guys. There are three core gameplay modes to this game. Number one is co-op. If you want, you and your pals can team up, your homies can team up, and you guys can go against uh, different AI in different levels. And it's actually quite fun. It was really good practice for somebody who hasn't spent a ton of time in the Insurgency series. It was a good way for me to get the training wheels off and just really get the full feel of the game and, and figure out the pacing of the game. And the AI is actually pretty good. They're a bunch of sneaky pricks. <laughs> Then you have Versus. Versus is another one of the three core modes. Um, Versus is broken down into three different types of game types. Um, and these game types are called Push, Firefight, and Skirmish. So Push is where the attacking team has to capture all the enemy objectives one by one and then destroy the final weapon cache in order to, in order to win, basically. So it's a mixture of uh, Rush and Conquest, which I thought was pretty fun. I think that's one of my favorite modes in the game. You get Respawn Waves as well, so it's a, a mixture of like your Battlefield mode and then, say, Rainbow Six Siege or Counter-Strike Go because if you die, you're out until your team actually captures one of the objectives and then the entire team respawns. So there's different respawn waves. Firefight is a little bit different. In Firefight, the goal is to either capture all three of the objectives or eliminate all players and, or have at least two-thirds of the objectives captured by the time runs out. So that one's more of kind of like a free-for-all. It really depends on how your team wants to play. But the cool part about Firefight is that that game mode seems to kind of evolve depending on what tactics the team decides to use, which is awesome because you, every time you go into a Firefight match, you don't really know what to expect or what your team's going to do. Skirmish is really similar to Push, except it's kind of the, it kind of works in the reverse. So in Push, the defenders have to eliminate all the attackers and defend their objective until 
Uh, they either kill all the attackers or until the time runs out. In Skirmish, it's the opposite, actually. It's uh, the attackers got to capture the objectives, but the ticket counter for the defending team actually depletes. And the last of the three core game modes is competitive, which is more ranked. This is more like your esports players, your, your people that want to go pro, you know, that kind of shit. No, 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 no. Hell no! I'm not into that shit. I play games to have fun. I don't play games to necessarily flex my muscles and show that I'm qualified for esports. I just play games to have fun. I go in there and I want to go shoot some stuff. I want to waste an afternoon doing jack shit and have a good time. So yeah, I didn't. I haven't touched the competitive. Probably won't. So yeah. So as you guys see here at the main menu, you got play, local play, tutorials. I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I'm using. This game actually looks really good. If I go to settings here, you can see how I have my graphic settings. I have my resolution at 4K 3840 by 2160 vertical sync the um, my presets I have pretty much on a mixture of high and very high obviously being on 4k you don't need things like uh, a ton of anti-aliasing things like that but this game actually the stability is runs very well I'm surprised especially for a smaller development team I have mostly everything set as maximum as high as you could possibly go even post processing on and I get a smooth 60 frames I don't have any frame rate drops anything like that my anti-tropic filtering anti-tropic filtering today junior is at eight um and the game runs just fine there is also character customization which is not too bad well it's shit really there isn't a whole lot but the cool thing about this game is that there are zero and i repeat zero loot boxes zero microtransactions guys yes yes oh yeah how the game works is in order to customize your character with better looking gear which i mean it's it's a modern military game there isn't anything crazy you're not going to find you know glow sticks that attach your characters or gold weapons or weapons that glow in the dark any of that bullshit what you're going to find in this game are your typical military fatigues um the different types of tactical uniforms and you can change the colors from green to gray to brown to more green to more gray to brown to a little bit more gray less brown and more green you get it now as you play the game you are, you get these little tokens and what you do with these tokens is you take them to the character customization menu and you can use them to buy different visual upgrades for your character different cosmetics i guess you could say for your guns for your your character you get a dozen or so faces to choose from you get billy bob abdul you get james you get josh you get gabe you get lenny you get whatever a bunch of different random characters the, the customization itself was all right i mean in a game like this you don't really care you're in first person everyone's decked out with their helmets their gear you don't really pay attention to that my guy ended up looking like nick kroll from the kroll show on comedy central so there's that so yeah, in-game graphically, there are about seven or eight, I believe eight maps total. Um, the maps range from a desert with some mountains um, in, in a couple buildings. There's a desert um, in a city. There's a desert um, downtown city. There's a refinery that's in the desert. Um, there's a summit that's basically a mountain in the desert. So, I mean, the game's called Insurgency Sandstorm, so I didn't expect snow maps. Although, it would be pretty cool some, somewhere later on the line if they added some some maps. But, I mean, the layout of the maps is great. It's not your, your three-lane Call of Duty bullshit. There are a couple maps that, like, there's, for example, there's a map that has, like, a river that going through the center of it. Um, there's a bridge on the side that you can take, or you can go into the little canal area and you walk your way up. So, there's, there's different maps that have, you know, trees and foliage and whatnot. Um, there's a map where you run around and there's you know a bunch of flowers it's like a field um, so it, it does have some color in it it's not all sand but you know you run through that flower patch you turn around and you get your head blown off anyways in game the graphics are great I mean they hold up to today's standards they definitely give Battlefield Call of Duty a run for their money as far as being a you know a smaller game by made by a smaller development company this game keeps up to par with the big, you know, the titans of the industry like Call of Duty and Battlefield. And I don't know what else I could ask for. The, the the game's chaotic. There's a lot going on on screen. The frame rate holds up. The shadows look great. The textures look great. Um, the amount of the attention to detail around the world looks fantastic. I mean, it's not like we're in downtown Chicago or anything like that. So you're not going to see newspapers or bodies just laying on the ground you know, randomly, anything like that. <laughs> But you'll see a lot of dust, you'll see a lot of debris floating around the map. The game looks great, it holds up very well, I'm very impressed, and yeah, A plus for me.
sound wise this is where the game really shines honestly this the sound in this game is fucking fantastic i mean this game puts a lot of different modern day shooters even shooters in general to, to absolute shame the explosions the sound of bullets ricocheting off the walls distant explosions in the background from grenades and rockets choppers flying around airstrikes being called in ac-130s coming in and dropping bombs a-10 warthogs doing sweeping runs it just sounds fantastic <laughs> When everything comes together and the game is at its prime and its finest in, in the maps, it sounds so immersive. And if anybody knows me, they know that I'm big on immersion when it comes to these types of games or any game in general. I like to be immersed. I like to feel like I'm in whatever whatever I'm in, whether I'm in Skyrim, whether I'm in a World War II game. You know, I want it to feel authentic. I want to feel like I'm actually there. And this game nails it. The sound is so good that even when your teammates chatter back and forth to each other via the, the in the end game radio, it puts the static and it puts background noise in the, through the microphone so you can actually hear them like they're talking to you through actual tech comms and communication like they're actually in battle. <laughs> This is stuff that you won't see in other games, guys. This is stuff that's important because it's all about the immersion. It adds to the immersion. It makes you feel like you're part of the game. So sound-wise, 9.5999 out of 10 for me, for sure. <laughs> Gameplay-wise, it's much different than most Call of Duty Battlefield games that most people are playing nowadays. This game actually requires you to be very tactical, very precise with your movements, and to really seek cover and take advantage of that cover. If you pop your head out at the wrong moment for one second, somebody's gonna pick it off. This isn't an arcade run and gun game where you just run out there with your balls hanging out and you just try to light as many people up as you can and get a high KD ratio. This game, you probably, honestly, won't have a high KD. And I'm not saying you, you'll suck at the game, I'm saying that you're not going to go 40 and 5 every single match, but it's more of a game where it has a lower kill count because you're more focused on objectives. When you reload your gun, you throw away the magazine. You don't just refill the magazine. You actually have a set limit of magazines that you need to take care of and that you need to deplete fully before switching. And if you tap R to reload, what he does is he pulls the magazine out, he puts it in his pocket, and then he replaces it with a new one. However, if you run out of ammo because you didn't you know, hold F to pick up somebody else's ammo on the ground that you had killed, then you'll end up having to pull out that magazine that you had used earlier and use that until it's gone. So I think that's a real cool feature. If you double tap R, he actually pulls the magazine out of the gun and throws it for a faster reload, but at the same time you lose that magazine. So there's a lot of really cool gameplay features like that that really add to the immersion of the game because you need to make those quick decisions on the fly. Coordinating with your team is also a huge part of the game. There's a, a class called Commander, and what the Commander is used for is he calls in airstrikes and artillery strikes even different types of deployable smoke screens and things like that that can change the entire flow and the entire pace of a game if used correctly. But in order for this commander to call in those strikes and, and that artillery, they need to have somebody called an observer that needs to be within a certain radius of them in order to use their radio to call in the airstrikes. So there's a lot of teamwork involved and everyone, you can see everyone in, in the matches, it's pretty funny. They're all trying to keep the commander safe and push that commander forward with the observer so that as they get in line to take over an objective, they can use that person to deploy a smoke screen or deploy an artillery strike, call on an attack chopper to take everyone down so they can move forward on the position. So the way it works is really cool and it adds a really cool mechanic to the game that you don't really see in other modern shooters nowadays. Oh shit! I will say the one thing that did annoy me is if your squad captures a point and you're near that point and it wants you to retreat backwards, kind of like in Battlefield Rush when you know you take over an objective, the other team has to retreat back to like this invisible line to where their spawn point is and where they can't kill anybody or else in 10 seconds they, you know, the, the game kills them and respawns them back there. This game does something very similar where if you capture an objective or the other team captures an objective, whichever team you're on, you've got to run back to your quote unquote spawn point or to where the next area is that you got to either defend or capture and while you're in that zone it doesn't count down and kill you like in battlefield what it does instead is it just says you're out of the area you can't do anything and you can't shoot so this happened to me several times and i don't i hate invisible walls i hate that kind of it just takes it breaks the immersion right if i'm out there just let me i'm gonna get fucking murdered anyway this isn't run gun johnny rambo i'm definitely gonna die what happened was in a game i was playing i was running back to our area and i saw an enemy and he was literally maybe 10 to 10 to 15 meters in front of me 
me, an enemy running directly in front of me, getting, you know, to get into the zone. And I was chasing him because I couldn't shoot him until I got into the zone. But of course, once I got into the zone, I lit his ass up like a motherfucking Christmas tree. Yeah, bitch. But still, it was just annoying. It just broke the immersion, and I wish they would find a different way to deal with that, or just or let players be able to shoot and you know let them know that they need to get back to the zone. So, Insurgency Sandstorm, guys, should you pick it up? Hell yes. Absolutely. If you are a fan of modern military first-person shooters, if you're tired of the same old bullshit getting recycled and shoveled out every single year, if you're tired of the loot boxes and the microtransactions, if you want a real game that really puts your skills to the test and that really hones your skills as an FPS player, then Insurgency Sandstorm is the game that you definitely want to pick up and you definitely don't want to miss because I don't think it's getting the love it actually deserves. And I really want to get attention on this game so we can get another one and, and maybe some more expansion packs because this is a game that I will definitely support and a game that I would definitely pick up the expansion packs for because the developers are so on point with releasing patches and hotfixes for the game that you can tell that they genuinely care about the game and the player base and making sure that they take care of their player base. And that's what it's about. It's about having fun. It's about supporting developers that are for the gamers. And I'm all about that. So Insurgency Sandstorm, guys, definitely worth picking up. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you already have it or if you're thinking about having it, leave a comment. Please like the video if you enjoyed this review. It helps the channel grow. And then I will see you guys next time on Talk Gaming. Play an explosive. Get me. I bet I can play this fast. You can play this shotgun boy. You better hope I do because I'm blowing. I blew that guy to smithereen.